to WOW TV. My name is Angel and I'm here from the Wizards of Wright program. The WOW program is a part of the Educational Outreach Office here at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Today, you and I are going to talk about magnets. Are you ready to get started? Let's go! I bet most of you have used magnets before. A magnet is a special metal that attracts other kinds of metals. Sometimes a magnet is attracted to another metal, like that. Sometimes they aren't. When two magnetic items begin to attract to each other, you'll be able to feel that attraction, and we call that a force. The force is the object's magnetic field, and although it's invisible, that field is what attracts other magnets and certain metals. The presence of a magnetic field is why you can cover a metal refrigerator door with your magnets. This is an exploring box. And on here are different kinds of metals. Teachers, please give an exploring box to a small group of students to share, maybe groups of three or four, and also pass out the plastic rings. Once you give each student a magnet, give them time to test the items in the box and the metal on the plastic rings to see which ones are magnetic. They can even test their magnet to another magnet. Go ahead and pause here, and after they've finished testing the items and you've collected the materials, I'll be here waiting. Great job, everyone. Were you able to feel that force? Remember, that's the magnetic field. The magnetic field is strongest around the ends of magnets. These are called poles, and all magnets have a north pole and a south pole. What else do we know of that has a north pole and a south pole? Yep, the Earth. When you tested your magnet to another magnet a few minutes ago, what happened? Did they attract? Did they repel? Wait a minute, what do those words mean? If you hold two magnets with their opposite poles near each other, north and south, you will feel a pull between the magnets. That's attraction. If the poles are the same, north and north, or south and south, you will feel the magnets push away from each other. That's the magnet repelling. Magnets come in many shapes and sizes. Certain metals, like iron and nickel, can become magnetic. It just so happens I have a nickel. Let's test it. Is it magnetic? Uh-oh. Now, just because it's metal doesn't mean it's magnetic. There are lots of different types of metals, and most coins are actually made out of copper these days. Remember when we said the ends of magnets are called the North Pole and the South Pole, and you told me that was just like the Earth? Let's talk about why. The very center of the Earth, what we call the core, is made mostly of iron. Iron is magnetic, so the Earth makes its own magnetic field. This makes the Earth a giant magnet. And where is the magnet the strongest? at its ends, the poles. So the Earth's magnetic field is strongest near the North Pole and the South Pole. Now, let's talk about how magnets work. Imagine two of you trying to pull a wagon, but one pulls from one side and the other pulls from the exact opposite side. What happens? You're right, the wagon isn't going to move. Pushing is a force just like pulling. What if two of you were pushing on the opposite sides of a table or desk? Would it move? I'll wait while your teacher has two of you try it. You need to be on opposite sides of a table or a desk. And if you both push, will it move? I'll wait while you try. Did that work? Now, imagine that the two kids on opposite sides of the wagon realize that it isn't working, and one of them switches positions. What happens when they both pull or push from the same side? Of course, the wagon will move. If we moved both of you to the same side of the desk or table you experimented with before, would you be able to move it? You're right, you would. Let me show you something. I have two magnets here, and some magnets are stronger than others. Let's test that. Let's see how many paper clips this first magnet will pick up. Not bad. Let's try it again. 
There's maybe about 10. Now, let's try this magnet. Whoa, hold on, I lost the magnet. That's quite a difference, isn't it? Now I'd like for you to try something else. These are wand magnets. Teachers, please give each student a wand magnet and let's see if they can each find three materials in the room that are magnetic and one that isn't. The challenge will be if they can find something different than what their classmates find. After they've finished and you've collected the wand magnets, I'll be here waiting. Were you able to find magnetic items in your classroom? Were you able to find something that wasn't magnetic? For your next activity, your teacher will be passing out a pencil and two of these donut magnets. I want you to put the magnets on the pencil and experiment with them. When do the magnets attract to each other and when do they push apart? Teachers, after they've finished, you can leave the magnets with the students, but please collect the pencils. I'll be here waiting when you're ready. Remember when we said that iron is a magnetic material? Let's test that. In a moment, your teacher will give you a box of iron filings. Use one of the donut magnets to collect or move the iron around. Since you still have two donut magnets, test using one magnet and then both at the same time to see how much iron you can move. Teachers, after they have finished, please collect the iron filings, the donut magnets, and the pencils. I'll be here waiting when you're ready. As we said before, one end of a magnet is called the North Pole and the other is the South Pole. The battery that you put into some of your games or controllers has a different type of charge at each end. One is positive and the other is negative. They're opposites. Magnets also have opposite ends, the poles, and we call them North and South. As we've seen, if you put two south poles together, they push apart. And if you put two north poles together, they'll push apart. But if they're different, they'll pull together. Just remember, opposites attract and similars push back. As we talked about before, planet Earth is a big magnet because of its iron core. Part of the core is continuously spinning really fast which creates its magnetic field and is the reason why the Earth has those North and South Poles. This is helpful for explorers and adventurers as they can use a compass to find out which way is North and which way is South. Did you know that a compass always points North? The reason is that a compass needle is a magnet. Since opposite poles attract, the South Pole of the compass needle is attracted to Earth's magnetic North Pole. How many of you have ever used a compass? If you ever go hiking in the woods, a compass can help you find your direction. A compass works by showing you where north is. And once you know where that is, then you can figure out south and east and west. A compass needle always turns to the north. The compass needle itself is a magnet and it's attracted to another magnet, the earth. The south pole of the compass needle is attracted to the north pole and will move towards it. Sometimes a compass won't work. Well, that's because the pull of the magnet may be stronger than the pull of the Earth's magnetic force. So the needle is drawn to a closer, stronger magnet. Teachers, in a moment, please give each student a film canister. And in it is a donut magnet tied to a piece of dental floss. Each student will also need a compass. When you hold the string in the air, the magnet should turn to face the north. When you move, the magnet should adjust. Now experiment with the magnet and the compass and see what you can observe. Teachers, after the students try this and put the magnets back in the film canister, please collect them and the compasses. And I'll meet you back here for one last demonstration. these two pipes. This one is copper and this one is plastic. Do you think they're magnetic? 
Let's find out. Plastic? Nope. Copper? Nope. How quickly do you think the magnet will fall through the plastic pipe? I need you to count out loud after I drop it until it lands on the tray. Ready? Go. Whoa, that was fast. Let's do it again, make sure we were accurate. Ready? Go. Same number? Now, how quickly do you think the magnet will fall through the copper pipe? I need you to count out loud after I drop it until it lands on the tray. Ready? Go. Nope, nothing's clogged in there. Let's do it again and see if we were accurate. Ready? Go. Why did that happen? The falling magnet is creating a current in the copper pipe, which then produced a magnetic field. The magnet is attracted to the field and falls more slowly. Here are a few things I want to make sure you remember after today. When two magnetic items begin to attract to each other, you'll be able to feel that attraction, and we call that a force. That force is the object's magnetic field. The magnetic field is strongest around the ends of magnets, and these are called poles. And all magnets have a north pole and a south pole. If you put two light poles together, they push apart. And if you put two different poles together, they pull together. You all did a great job today. Thanks for joining me. Teachers, thanks so much for using this WOW lesson, and please check out more at our website at wpafbstem.com.